and welcome to part six of our epic Next.js tutorial. In this part, we're going to take a look how to summarize our YouTube videos using OpenAI, LangChain, and Next.js. So let's jump right into it. As always, we're going to have a complimentary blog post that you could find with all the code snippets as necessary. If you haven't done any of the previous tutorials, you could go and check out the previous videos. But with that being said, let's jump right into it. In the past video, we finished our accounts page where we able to update our bio and our image. Today, we're going to start working on the top navigation where we're going to add a form that will allow us to create summaries. We're also going to create a summaries page that currently doesn't exist. That's why we get our not found page, but we'll work on that in this video as well. So we're going to start by creating our summary form right off the bat. Let's jump in into source, components. We're going to go under forms and we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it summaryform.tsx. We could grab the snippet from our complimentary post here. You could scroll to where you see summaryform.tsx. Go ahead and copy the code and let's go ahead and add it here. If we scroll up here, we'll see that we just have our basic form. We have not implemented any of our actions yet. So if you take a look at our handle form submit, notice that it's really not doing much of anything. But you do see that we're calling this toast on success. We're actually using a library called Sonner, but we're using the implementation that you find with ChatCN UI. So when navigating to ChatCN UI, if you take a look on the components and scroll down, you're going to see this Sonner, Sooner, Sonner, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but this allows us to create cool toasts in our website. So let's go ahead and first install it. You could use this snippet here, npx chat c and slash UI at latest at Sonner. So let's go ahead and copy it and make sure you're still in the front end of your project. I'm gonna open a new terminal and I'm going to install Sonner. Once Sonner is installed, let's navigate to our app folder and we're going to go into our layout.tsx file. And we're going to go ahead and import it here at the top. Once we have it imported, let's scroll down here and in the body right above our header, we're going to add our Sonner component. And we're going to say that we want to show the pop-up in the bottom center. Now back in our summary form, you could see that we are calling toast on success to show summary created. So if we submit our form in the current state, all it's going to do is show us this message. So let's give it a try. But before we could test this form, we have to go ahead and add it to our header. So in our components folder on the custom, let's navigate to headers and we're going to import our summary form component that we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and import it here on the bottom. Now let's scroll down to our header and right after our logo, we're going to add our summary form. We're gonna, since we have access to our user and our user has okay prop, which if it's true, that means we're logged in, it's false, that means we are not logged in. So let's go ahead and conditionally render based on a logged in user. So if you are logged in, we should see our summary form. Now we should be able to check it out in our front end. Make sure that you have your front end running. And as I navigate back to my front end, you could see here we have our form. Doesn't matter what I type here, but when I click create submit, you could see a summary created, which is coming from our Sonar component that we just installed, which is fantastic. Now that we know that our form is connected because we see our console log coming from our toast, let's move on to the next part. Instead of using server actions, we are going to use Next.js route handlers. You could take a look at the documentation on how to create them. And we are able to create them inside the app folder. One of the reasons why we're using a app router, when using server actions, you do have a timeout window. Because you're going to be making requests to open AI, sometimes the wait exceeds the allowed time. So to avoid that, when we're making requests to our open AI, we're going to stick with our API routes. You could read more here in the documentation to see how to create them, but we're going to go ahead and cover that in 
this tutorial. In our project, let's navigate to app and we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it API. And inside this folder, we're going to create another folder and we're going to call it summarize. And inside the summarize folder, we're going to create a file and we have to name it route.ts to signify our route handler. In our blog post, you're gonna see this basic example of a route handler, and this is based on what you will find here on the documentation. We just put the code inside a try catch block. So once you copy the code from our snippet, let's go ahead and paste it in. So now we'll be able to make a request to API slash summarize, and it's going to hit this endpoint. So let's go ahead, connect this, to our form to make sure when we submit the form, we could at least see this console log. To accomplish this, we're going to create a new service. So let's navigate to data services and we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it summary service.ts. And we're going to create a new function called generate summary service. This is a typo that I have to fix, but basically what we want is this code snippet here. Let's paste it in. And all we're doing is we're making a fetch request to our API summarize route, which is going to hit the endpoint that we just created under app API summarize route. So now we're going to use this service inside our form. So let's navigate back to summary form. And at the top here, let's import our newly generated service. So I'm gonna say import generate summary service from our summary service. And here we're going to update our handle form submit right after set loading true. First thing we're going to do is create a new form data object, which is going to get our current target from our events, which is coming from our form when we submit it. And from that form data, we're going to go ahead and destructure our video ID. That's what we want to pass to our generate summary. Next, we're going to go ahead and call our generate summary service, pass the video ID, and then we're just going to console like the response from our handler. And if we take a look at our summary service, it's just returning that JSON response that we get from this endpoint. And if we take a look at that endpoint, at API slash summary slash routes. Here, we're gonna see that all we're going to return is a data object, which is gonna say return from our handler. So we should be able to see this in our console log. So let's give it a try. And if you take a look at our console log, notice we are returning that message from our route handler, which is pretty cool. Nice, now that we laid the basic foundation for our form, in the next video, we're going to take a look how to create a function to get our video transcript and pass it to OpenAI via LangChain. I'll see you in the next video.